My name is Elizabeth Willett, Senior Fertility Herbalist with the Natural Fertility Company. We are the naturalfertilityshop.com and naturalfertilityinfo.com. Um, hello, welcome to everyone who's joining. So today we're going to continue my, um, my talk about trying to help you understand what certain terms in relation to fertility health mean. Um, so fertility health, endocrine system support, stress response, immune response, and antioxidants. What do these all mean? Um, I started a few weeks ago explaining, uh, trying to explain anyway, a few terms that you often hear or read in relation to fertility health. And today it dawned on me that maybe some of the ways that we talk about the systems of the body and uh, or aren't necessarily understood very well. And so I thought I would come and try to help you understand them in a really bare bones sort of way. So let's just jump in and get started. Um, endocrine system support. Endocrine system support. What is the endocrine system? What does that mean? I venture a guess that a lot of you didn't understand um, anything about the endocrine system or know what it even was before you embarked on your fertility journey or began any testing. Maybe some of you don't still understand. I didn't before I started my education in holistic health studies and or this position <laughs> with the natural fertility shop. Uh, confession, uh, I didn't know either. So um, let's talk about the endocrine system. So the endocrine system is actually incredibly vital for fertility. We use it as a reference point a lot when we're talking about maintaining fertility health. Um, to put it very, very, very plainly, the endocrine system coordinates the production of and delivery of hormones um, to where they need to go in the body. That's essentially its main job. There are lots of endocrine glands. The major ones, um, some of them, all of them that play a role in hormone production and delivery are the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the pancreas, the ovaries and the testes, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid and the adrenal glands. Um, I found this really ex easy explanation that I wanna read to you. The endocrine system includes all of the glands of the body and the hormones produced in those glands. The glands are controlled directly by stimulation from the nervous system as well as by chemical receptors in the blood and hormones produced by other glands. So back to my explanation, the endocrine system coordinates the production of a delivery of hormones to where they need to go within the body. Hormonal balance and likewise hormonal imbalance happen because of endocrine system health or lack of endocrine system health, right? So when the endocrine system is not healthy and hormones aren't being produced as they should be for whatever reason or delivered to the right places, um, that is what causes hormonal imbalance. Um, what can you do about it? <laughs> what can you do about, well, how can you support endocrine, your endocrine system? Diet is really number one. That's going to be an overarching theme throughout my entire uh, little talk today. Diet is number one. Lifestyle is number two. We have to exercise, we've got to manage stress, we've got to ex reduce our exposure to endocrine system disrupting chemicals and hormones through our diet and through our lifestyle products. Um, yeah, we just basically have to. But then you can also nourish the endocrine system with um, herbs. The, these herbs are known as adaptogens. Um, they are commonly used as a great foundational way to support endocrine system health. Some of them, but not all, are uh, maca, ashwagandha, shizandra, reishi and shiitake mushrooms, and even shatavari. Those are some ideas of adaptogens that are widely used to support um, the healthy endocrine system function. So now on to stress. We talked about how managing stress is important for hormonal balance and um, supporting the endocrine system. But what do we mean when we say Im improve your body's stress response? What we mean is we want to have in some way, through natural therapies, obviously, because that's what we're here and what we do, um, help your body and help yourself react in a more even keel to stress. Prevent or um, prevent adrenal fatigue, help um, support healthy adrenal gland function, and even use certain natural therapies or things, um, supplements and herbs that have a calming effect on the nervous system. So if you for some reason can't get out of a stressful situation or are having an anxiety attack or um, any sort of really you know, acute, yet could be chronic, I guess, severe um, stress response, there are different herbs that you can take in the moment to bring you down out of that um, or to help bring you down out of that. 
Um, a lot of the things that I just talked about, a lot of the herbs that I just mentioned actually um, will work for helping the body improve their, its stress response. Certainly exercise, diet, removing yourself from stressful situations if and when you can. Uh, Mind-body therapies, if you've joined me at all on my periscopes, you've heard me talk about the effectiveness of mind-body therapies for stress management, but also herbs like chamomile, lavender, motherwort. We've talked about motherwort, um, if you've joined me as well, and linden. So there are many things you can do to help the body have a healthy stress response. Um, I understand that there are not always going to be times where you can remove yourself from the stressful situation. Um, I've certainly been sitting having conversations with people and gotten pretty worked up about something and, and not by choice, it just happens. So that's where some of these other things, um, particularly nervines or things that have a calming effect on the nervous system can come in handy. And now normalize the immune system. <laughs> How do you normalize the immune system? Isn't my immune system normal the way it is? For some people it's not. Um, this means to support or help balance immune system response. Um, the body was made to fight, fight invaders. So um, pollen, dust, viruses, um, bad bacteria, all sorts of things. Our bodies were created to be able to fight those things on its own, but there are, as we know, many times when it can't do it. It's overburdened by other things, whether it's stress or um, toxins or it's this super bug that you caught that there really isn't, uh, the body isn't used to having to fight off. Um, so we want to be able to help rejuvenate the immune system and help it work um, at its best. Um, and how do we do that? So diet again, I told you diet was going to be the overarching theme in this talk, but diet is one um, way to help boost the immune system. The more vitamins and minerals we get through our food, the more whole food we get, the better. Um, the more our body detoxifies itself, so helping support the liver in um, detoxifying hormones and getting the, the hormones uh, or the um, toxins out of itself, the more you eliminate through uh, going to the bathroom, that the better. The better your immune system will function. Um, there is an idea that immune system health is direct, directly related to gut health, so your intestines and your digestive system. So hopefully if your digestive system is functioning, functioning properly, your immune system can be supported and boosted. But so we've talked about diet. Systemic enzymes can help support a healthy immune response in the body. Herbs that we've already talked about, I mentioned Shatavari and Maca, but also Donkwai and Tribulus. All of these things are um, known to support healthy immune system function. And stress management, of course, uh, is, it fits in there as well. These are all kind of intertwined. Um, and then why did I throw antioxidants on the end? <laughs> Increase antioxidant levels. So what are antioxidants? Um, I venture a guess that a lot of you understand what they are, but they're natural substances that may prevent or delay some type of cell damage. Um, they're a family of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. There are, there are a lot of them. I told you this is going to be bare bones, so I'm not going to give you details necessarily. Um, but that help protect the body from the damage of free radicals and reduce oxidative stress. Um, that damages our cells, all of our cells. Um, and these things come from our environment, um, our diet if we're not eating incredibly healthy all the time, stress, um, all sorts of different places. <laughs> Those um, free radicals come from all different space, uh, all different places. So what do you do about it? How do you, how do you get antioxidants? How do you boost antioxidants within the body? There are a couple of ways. Diet, diet, diet. Um, I told you, I'm going to say it again. Diet. Diet is really the number one way to do that. Eating a lot of whole foods, uh, especially eating the rainbow. So if you're, if you think in that regard, lots of all of the colors of foods, reds, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, the darker berries, things like that. Um, lots of lots of great vitamins and minerals and nutrients and all of those whole foods that we should be consuming daily and that are part of the fertility diet, which many of you um, are following, I understand, and probably already eat every day. So pat yourself on the back for getting that extra antioxidant boost. Um, but you can also supplement with antioxidants. There are antioxidant supplements. Uh, the naturalfertilityshop.com has Fertilica Choice Antioxidants. It's a wonderful um, sister combination of antioxidants. And what I mean by that is um, 
It's important to consume antioxidants in their whole form, so whole foods, because they all work together to protect each other. Um, if an antioxidant is disarmed by a free radical, it will die, unless there's a sister antioxidant to come in and save it or revive it. That actually happens in our body. Think of when you're super down and in the dumps and you call your best friend and she says something that makes you just cheer up and happy and move on and get over it. In, within our body, there are antioxidants floating around. They're battling, they're battling, battling, battling for us. They're fighting those free radicals. But if one of them happens to succumb to a free radical, it will die and just go away unless there's a sister antioxidant that can come and help save it. Isn't that really kind of cool? I think it's fascinating. Um, but every antioxidant actually has a sister antioxidant to rejuvenate it when, it, when it's battling or if it needs help. Um, some antioxidants that you might have heard of before that are pretty common actually are vitamin C and E. Um, CoQ10, lipoic acid, um, glutathione, those are just a few of them um, that are common antioxidants that are really important for not only overall health, uh, but fertility health. And when we talk in terms of fertility health, we think a lot about antioxidants in the way they support egg and sperm health. Um, you'll read the word antioxidants whenever we're talking about egg and sperm health specifically. So um, ultimately, the reason why I've added, anti added antioxidants here is because this, when the cells are healthy and powerful um, and functioning as they're able to function, um, we can have a healthy immune response. Our immune cells are going to function at their best. We can hopefully have a healthy stress response. Um, we can hopefully have a healthy endocrine system. And um, like I just mentioned, not to mention or not to forget or over or pass over egg and sperm health, which are critical for healthy conception. So um, that's really all I have to say on these three topics. Uh, the endocrine system is critical for fertility health. It is what makes and delivers hormones to where they need to go in the body. And if your endocrine system is not functioning well because you have a fertility health issue or because you're overstressed or because your immune system isn't functioning at its best or you have a low, if you have, you're low in antioxidants, um, that's when hormonal balance happens. Um, so we need to be supporting our immune system. We need to be managing stress and helping our body have a healthy stress response. And one way to do that, of course, is through diet um, and consuming lots and lots and lots of antioxidants so that our cells are healthy. So I hope that was a really uh, simplified, easy way to understand these four different topics um, or four different things we say in relation to fertility health. I, this was bare bones, I told you that, <laughs> truly was bare bones. We have a lot more in-depth information on naturalfertilityinfo.com. We have wonderful, really thorough, detailed guides about each of these different topics. If endocrinology is your thing and you're really into uh, more about the endocrine system and all those glands I mentioned and how to support a healthy endocrine system, we have a, a fabulous guide on that. Um, each one of these areas actually we've got information on. So if you want to know more, please reach out to us through one of the ways that you can do that. Email, live chat, um, or what else do we have? Phone. <laughs> it would be better to email live chat because we're probably going to need to link you to a guide. Um, but do contact us if you want to know anything more in depth about any of these topics. And we have an entire team here to help get you answers to your questions um, from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time in the U.S. <laughs> Just put a little plug in there, our hours. Uh, thank you for coming, and um, I'll be back next week with more. Have a great day. Bye.